Our breaking news, an Ethiopian Airlines flight has crashed shortly after takeoff from Addis Ababa, killing all 157 passengers and crew thought to be on board. The airline told state media there were people of more than 30 nationalities among the dead. Now that includes at least 32 from Kenya, 18 Canadians, nine passengers from Ethiopia, among many others. The Boeing 737 MAX was heading to the Kenyan capital, Nairobi, when air traffic control lost contact just six minutes after takeoff. It's not yet known what caused this crash. A recovery operation is underway southeast of Addis Ababa. Alistair Leithhead reports now from Nairobi. Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 was due to arrive in the Kenyan capital, Nairobi, this morning with 149 passengers and eight crew on board. It took off from Addis Ababa at 8.35 in the morning local time, but just six minutes later, it disappeared from the radar. It crashed near the town of Bishoftu, just 37 miles from the airport. A search and rescue operation was launched, but it soon became clear there would be no survivors. The Ethiopian Prime Minister's office put out a statement expressing its deepest condolences to the families of those who've lost loved ones. We need to make sure that their relatives and friends who are meeting them at Nairobi Airport, who are supposed to meet them at Nairobi Airport this morning, um, are supported in the best way possible uh, in this time of anxiety. Among the dead were people from 33 countries. A major international United Nations convention is due to start in Nairobi on Monday, and delegates were arriving today. Some UN staff died in the crash. Seven British nationals were also among the dead. The aircraft was brand new. Ethiopian Airlines, Africa's biggest operator, received its first Boeing 737-800 MAX aircraft last June. The plane that crashed was only delivered in November, four months ago. It had flown up from South Africa this morning. And it's the same type of aircraft bought by Lion Air that crashed off Indonesia last October with the loss of 189 passengers and crew, also shortly after takeoff. Boeing said it was deeply saddened and that a technical team was ready to provide assistance. Now all thoughts are with the families of those killed. Alistair Leithhead, BBC News, Nairobi. Well, seeing some of the reactions of those families is Larry Madawo, who's at Nairobi Airport for us. Larry, what a tragedy. And people at the airport, I suppose, were waiting for relatives to come in on a regular flight, almost a shuttle hop. It is exactly a shuttle hop, Philippa. This flight is one of the, uh, the four that Ethiopian Airlines does between Addis Ababa and Nairobi. It's fairly short, two, and ha two hours or so, so it does this four times a day. It's fairly commonplace. And those who are expecting this flight this morning at 10.25 have then had to turn to grief, to mourning. And we've seen so many devastated families trying to come to terms with this tragedy. They are being led to an emergency center that's been set up at an airport hotel nearby where they were, they're getting more information, where the identities of those who were killed in the aircraft have been revealed to them, and where a BBC team at that hotel has had sobbing in the rooms where they are. But also the authorities here have told us they're getting counseling and all forms of support they need. Larry, thank you very much for that update from the airport. The crashed planes manufacturer Boeing has released a statement. It says they are deeply saddened to learn of the passing of the passengers and crew on Ethiopian Airlines plane. Uh, we extend our sympathies to the families and the loved ones of people on board. Uh, the Boeing technical team, they say, is prepared to provide technical assistance. The 737 MAX is the same type of aircraft that crashed last October, shortly after takeoff from the Indonesian capital, Jakarta also killing everyone on board. Boeing warned then that erroneous readings from a flight monitoring system could have caused its plane to dive. Well, I've been talking about this to aviation analyst Jerry Sujatman in Jakarta and asked him first what he sees as the priorities in the aftermath of this crash. Well, the first important questions will be, how did it go down? We saw the photo that has been released by uh, Ethiopian Airlines of the uh, crash site, it indicates a, a high-speed impact. Uh, so that narrows down the possibilities uh, somewhat. Uh, we looked at the, we already looked at some of the data that's been published from what the aircraft transmitted. Um, so this uh, experts around the world, aside from the, uh, the, the official investigators will be looking at that, the, 
over the next 24 hours to see whether this uh, matches certain patterns or certain probabilities that's known to the to the, to the type of aircraft or suspected to be uh, present at the time. There's a couple of factors that I'd like to ask you to talk about to do with this aircraft, the 737 MAX, um, which is which is new. It's it's very new. Um, the angle of attack. Talk to us about this and, and the possibility that this type of plane may stall. Okay, uh, the angle of attack is basically the difference between the path of the wing and the direction of the wing coming on, sorry, direction of the wind coming onto the wing. So it's a difference between uh, to put it sim in simple words, the angle of the nose to the relative uh, incoming wind. The higher that goes, the more lift you get, but after a certain angle, you start to lose lift because uh, the climb angle becomes too much for the airflow to uh, flow smoothly over the wings. Um, this uh, relies on a sensor that is on the nose of the aircraft. Um, it is known from the previous crash, the Lion Air crash in October, in late October, that this sensor was problematic for that particular flight, and that uh, there is a possibility, as Boeing already announced, that it might uh, it should there be an error on that sensor, it might send the wrong signals to the aircraft automation that will send the aircraft from uh, pushing its nose down. That is. Uh, this is what we feared. Could this be another one? But it's still very early days. And just very briefly, another factibility of unstable uh, vertical speed. That's something that's being worried about. Yes, the unstable vertical speed, it needs to be looked at. Uh, the data that's been published uh, will, will be uh, studied uh, by experts around the world because uh, we need to know whether that's as whether that is the actual aircraft moving or whether there was a erroneous uh, uh, data that's been transmitted from the aircraft uh, again the, the the telltale signs of uh, of what, what we call unreliable airspeed is uh, the difficulty for the pilots to maintain a, a stable Jerry. flight path well that was talking about what the investigation will search for first. With me is travel journalist Simon Calder. I suppose, Simon, that is the first thing, isn't it? Looking for the black boxes. Yes, the cockpit voice recorder, the flight data recorder, which, given the uh, crash site, is so close to, uh, effectively, the, the headquarters of um, Ethiopian Airlines, the investigators, they will be recovered very quickly and they will be analysed initially very quickly as well to uh, determine, among other things, whether there is a connection, as we've been hearing, possibly possibly with the Lion Air crash last October. Yeah, whether it's not just this plane, but this kind of plane. And you know, when I uh, look at uh, Ethiopian Airlines, for example, celebrating its delivery of the 737 MAX, this was a, a very new plane and very highly thought of. Yes, uh, the airlines which have ordered it, and there are over 5,000 on order worldwide, um, are very fond of this aircraft because it is proven to be popular with passengers, proven to be a very good uh, aircraft uh, in terms of efficiency and operation. But crucially, the new design meant it was 14% more fuel efficient than current uh, versions and as a result of that you've got this order of 5,000 around 350 have been delivered so far uh, the biggest orders are with Southwest in the US American Airlines and Air Canada uh, but dozens of other airlines around the world have ordered it um, Europe's biggest budget airline Ryanair has 135 on order but it hasn't yet taken delivery of any of the aircraft so this is this development, not only a global tragedy with so many different nationalities on board, but pause for thought for the global industry, the aviation industry, about what to do now. Well, yes. I mean, we, we have seen in the past a number of aircraft have had problems when they've entered service, um, not least going back to the start of the passenger jet age and the Comet aircraft. Um, after that, the DC-10 had a series of uh, uh, accidents. Um, and after that, the Boeing 787, when it first entered service, um, had a, a number of issues involving lithium batteries fires. Now, it's way too early to tell if there is going to be any connection with the uh, Lion Air uh, issue and whether this, um, this software that's been deployed to prevent stalls 
is in some way connected with the disaster, but of course it doesn't uh, give give passengers um, huge confidence in the in the airline industry. Even though when you look at the numbers, uh, aviation is unbelievably safe. Yeah, I know many passengers contact you, talk to you, and follow kind of your your what what you're saying and. There will be that issue for airlines to contend with. If there are passengers due to fly on a 737 MAX, they're going to feel nervous. What, the airlines have to make a decision about how much they say. At the moment, there is nothing that uh, either Boeing, the manufacturers, or the aviation authorities, in particular America's FAA, have said that gives any reason for concern. Um, there are very good, uh, obviously, very good training, very good systems in place. And therefore, I would, without hesitation, step on board a 737 MAX. Uh, safety, of course, is absolutely the priority throughout aviation, though. And if there is any suggestion that the, these two incidents are linked, it could well be that you will get uh, emergency airworthiness directives put out um, that airlines may need to change some of their procedures, some of their, their uh, training processes in order to uh, uh, deal with, with potential issues in future. But uh, in terms of safety over the next few days, weeks, months, um, uh, I would remain very, very confident. And you mentioned pilot training there. I know that was one of the issues after the Lion Air uh, crash. Boeing looked again at, at how pilots, for example, deal with the problem if a sensor malfunctions. Yes, and, and so as we've been hearing, the idea is that if the aircraft believes, possibly through um, a malfunctioning sense, uh, sensor, that a stall is imminent, then it will tilt the nose down and pilots need to know um, how to combat that if they believe that the aircraft is, is res responding in an inappropriate way. Um, clearly, uh, the, the systems built into aircraft to keep them safe are generally extremely benign, but there is this particular focus. Could the sport stall protection system actually be inadvertently creating some kind of risk? Yes, Simon, thank you very much. We need to know, of course, what, what the facts are, what the questions are that are being asked and how airlines are going to assess what they ought to do next. So thanks very much for your expertise.